Welcome back to The Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. And it's your business to keep track of the most scandalous government maybe in United States history, at least in modern history, making uh, Richard Nixon look like a lightweight every single day if it's not AP scandals, if it's not uh, Benghazi scandals, if it's not Fast and Furious. I know I'm missing something. Guess what? If it's a scandal-related you're always missing something if you're trying to do a list of Obama scandals. I've uh, I've got uh, my friend on. He's been on here before, John Malcolm. He's with the Heritage Foundation. He's a rural of law expert, which, yeah, good luck with that in this co- culture we're living in today. Uh, John, welcome to our program. Thanks, Kevin. It's good to be on with you. We're going to change you to, to the Prince of Pandemonium since rule of law is considered so passe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, talk a little bit about this. Uh, you wanted, wanted to focus on the AP. Uh, the AP CEO calls government seizure of phone <laughs> records unconstitutional, says chill already felt. What do you think he meant by that? When I, th- when I see language like chill already felt, hey, Kevin, don't be so lazy. Read the whole article. But anyway, <laughs> when I see that, I just got this in, so I, I haven't had a chance to read it. True confessions. Sure. Though I have read articles about this. But that chill, to me, if I'm a journalist and the government's doing that kind of thing, is you're wondering at what point will that accumulation of information turn into some type of retaliation for that information? Well, actually, there's you know there's the AP story and there's a, a new breaking story involving a search warrant that was issued uh, a couple of years ago for email content of a Fox reporter on another uh, story. That's also uh, rather chilling. Uh, now, you know, look, the AP story is a little bit nuanced, I have to say. So there was a subpoena issued covering a two-month period of time to get the toll record. So not the content of the telephone calls, but just what numbers were dialed and how long the phone call lasted, etc. for 20 phone lines involving five AP reporters and an editor who had published a story that included classified information. And, you know, the, the AP is is justifiably concerned, saying, look, you're digging into our phone calls and our phone records. That is going to have a chilling effect, not only in terms of how we go about doing our business, but also in terms of, of our sources. They're going to be afraid to contact us uh, if they know that you know the FBI is going to be snooping around in this way. Now, I have to say, class, the leak of classified information is a very, very serious matter and can imperil national integrity, you know, national security. Uh, it can also have a chilling effect on those people who would otherwise cooperate with us and provide us information about al-Qaeda and other terrorists information, you know, other terrorists who mean us harm. So the chilling effect in this case really runs both ways. But there is no question that this was a very broad subpoenaed, uh, subpoena, probably unprecedented. And when you couple that with the fact that the FBI obtained a search warrant for the content of a reporter's email, and by the way, in the course of seeking that search warrant, put in an affidavit that they had probable cause to believe that the reporter himself had committed a crime. That certainly is a shot across the bow of media uh, of the media, okay. you know, anywhere. Okay, That's this, so this is potentially bigger than the AP story. I, I, in my mind, it is, but I think the two definitely sort of present a pattern. But yes, I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, we are going to aggressively investigate the sources of a media story, and including that, we're going to obtain some records from the media. It's another thing to be able to say, if the media representative aggressively pursues a story, he may be himself committing a crime. That is, that will send a real chilling effect up the spine of, you know, every reporter that's out there doing what reporters do. Yeah, dang reporters. So tell me, tell me about, uh, you know, what exactly these uh, emails, uh, how, how would these emails be of interest to uh, the Department of Justice and, and specifically to Eric Holder, which, by the way, is almost always a common denominator of every scandal in the Obama White House. I don't know. I mean, it, it seems rather, uh, you know, interesting to me that uh, that uh, he is always in the middle of these things. I don't know if you notice. There are plenty of scandals to go around. So uh, the IRS and Benghazi scandal, so far as I know, didn't really involve him too much. But, but there's plenty of there are plenty out there. Yeah. Uh, there's no question the Department of Justice has not covered itself with glory. So the, the email scandal involves a 2009 report that James Rosen, who's the chief Washington correspondent for Fox News, did, in which he cited information from a classified document uh, from the State Department that indicated that 
Sources inside North Korea had said that if the U.N. imposed new sanctions, that the North Koreans were likely to respond with new uh, nuclear missile tests. Now, there's been a guy who's been indicted in connection with that leak. He was an advisor to the State Department, a guy named Stephen Jinwoo Kim, and it was suspected that Kim was in contact with Rosen and was the source. And as I say, he's now been charged with this. However, the FBI, in the course of this investigation, got a search warrant, so a judge was involved. And in order to get a search warrant involving a member of the media, it's not enough to be able to say, well, I think that what I'm seeking is evidence of a crime. You have to, you have to establish to the judge's satisfaction that there's probable cause to believe that the reporter himself was involved in the criminal activity. And the affidavit, in fact, says that in the FBI agent's opinion, Rosen was a co-conspirator, an aider and a better of criminal activity, and that would make him just as guilty as Kim. Yeah, and we're not talking light charges here. We're talking about potential uh, decades in prison. Oh, yes. No, that's right. The disclosure of classified information that harms national security is about as serious as it gets, and the, the, the potential penalties involved are severe, as they should be. Yeah. Uh, but when you start applying those, uh, those sorts of penalties to reporters who are just going about doing what reporters do, that is very, very scary. And then, you know, you take that and you add on to it very broad subpoenas uh, seeking toll records from reporters' lines, not only dedicated AP lines, but the private telephone lines of the AP reporters. That is uh, incredibly aggressive law enforcement tactics and ought to ca- uh, you know, cause people uh, to ask a lot of very, very serious questions. And I assume Congress will. Okay, so uh, this administration seems to be uh, able to do almost anything. It's beyond Teflon. They used to say Reagan was Teflon. It's laughable when you laugh, you know, look at, at, at this guy. But it apparently it's now breached an area that uh, now even the media is alarmed. And, and they're, you know, uh, saying, hey, wait a minute. Um, how much trouble is this administration in going forward when it comes to dealing with the media? Well, I think the, uh, the, the media has had a, a you know, cold water <laughs> thrown in their face, uh, and I think that this has been a wake-up call for them. And I think that uh, any credibility that the administration had in or any goodwill uh, has largely been exhausted. So I think that reporters will do what perhaps they should have been doing from the very beginning, which is uh, being a little bit more skeptical, asking tougher questions, taking a more jaundiced view. I mean, when you have things like the administration saying, well, the IRS was, was, uh, was targeting conservative groups, but of course, politics weren't involved, and these decisions were only made by low-level bureaucrats in one office, that really doesn't pass the last test. And it's important to have uh, journalists of all kinds viewing statements like that skeptically and asking tough questions and following up. I think the president had uh, a reserve of goodwill that he did not deserve, and perhaps that's now been exhausted. Yeah, yeah, which he did not deserve. Those are the operative words. Talk about a love affair between the media and a guy. And the guy is now, you know what, it's looking like a pretty ugly codependent relationship is what it's looking like. (laughs) And uh, we'll just see how long it takes before they go back into the uh, dance of going back to being abused. I'll tell you right now, this guy is scary. It's interesting to watch. Uh, Do you think there's uh, enough intestinal fortitude to have Watergate-style hearings? Hearings on this uh, by Daryl Issa and company. Well, you know, look, Congress is looking into this at the moment. Uh, people people say that this is all partisan, but really, when the IRS is out uh, snooping around uh, and making decisions for political reasons, that's the kind of thing that really ought to send a chill up the spine of every American. And when you have stories like Benghazi, where career diplomats have now come forward and said, "Look," uh, that the administration was was spinning a lie, and they were spinning a lie uh, that fit with the narrative uh, that was part of their election campaign. And we were shocked when uh, the U.N. ambassador, Susan Rice, was dispatched to the networks to tell a story that everybody on the ground knew was a lie. That's yeah. also a wake-up call. And uh, hopefully when that kind of thing, when, when eight non-political career folks start stepping forward, that ought to cause everybody to stand up and take notice and at the very least look at these issues again because the American public deserves answers. 
Yeah, you're almost as long-winded as me. That's very good. Hey, you know what, though? It's interesting. Yeah, you know, I wonder if that, that, that chill that went up and down uh, Chris Matthews' leg has now moved up and down his spine, you know, with what's going on. And uh, my producer uh, aptly pointed out that, you know, uh, although it was an IRS scandal, uh, other agencies, including the FBI and ATF, were involved in some of this harassment. So you got to wonder if there's some triangulation involved. I don't know. It's something about that guy, Eric Holder. He seems to be in the middle of everything. And uh, But let me tell you, there's, as you pointing out there are plenty of scandals going on and and to try to keep track of them good luck john malcolm does an awesome job every time he comes on he's with the heritage foundation one of the country's premier think tanks check out heritage.org and the foundry.org to get great content by people like john and some of the other brilliant minds over there at heritage thanks john thanks kevin Bye -bye. when we come back we're gonna have more for you I do want to remind you best content here can be found over there at usdailyreview.com yeah.